Your monthly subscription box from PostFlyBox.com includes all the materials needed to tie a dozen flies, along with some extra goodies. The TNT baitfish pattern is a salt water fly that could be used just about anywhere at any time, as it represents a wide range of forage species that saltwater predatory fish regularly pursue. Begin by getting one of the forged extra strong hooks firmly secured in the jaws of your tying vise. Here we're going to tie a tan version of the fly, so load a bobbin with the tan uni thread. Get the thread started on the hook shank behind the eye and take a few wraps rearward before snipping off the excess tag. Continue taking thread wraps to about one third of the way down the hook shank. For the tail of the fly, separate out a clump of gold fiber and snip it free from the hank. To make the snipped off ends look a little more natural, find the midpoint of the clump and roll it and slide it in your fingertips several times. Doing this will rearrange the fibers so the snipped off ends are more random in length and look more natural. Find the midpoint of the clump once again and place it on top of the hook shank at the location of your tying thread. Take a couple of wraps to bind it to the shank, then pull the forward pointing portion back and take wraps to anchor that. Make sure everything is bound down really well and pointing rearward. End with your tying thread a short ways in front of the material. The rest of the body of the fly is created using tan craft fur. Snip an ample clump free down close to the backing, then strip out and discard the shorter fuzzy under fur from the butts. As with the gold fiber, you want the snipped off butts to look more natural. So once again, grab the clump by its midpoint, then roll and slide it a couple of times to make those ends more random in length. Lay the clump's midpoint on top of the hook shank above your tying thread and secure it with a few wraps. Now, go back to the craft fur and snip free a similar sized clump. Again, clean it out, make the butt ends look more natural, and place its midpoint on the underside of the hook beneath the first clump. Then take wraps of tying thread to secure it there. Get hold of the forward pointing portion of the lower clump and pull it back on the far side of the hook. Then pull the forward pointing part of the top clump straight back over top of the hook. With all the craft fur swept rearward, take wraps of tying thread over top of the fur to hold it back. Once again, relocate your tying thread to a little ways in front of the tied in fur. The fly should now look something like this. Next, simply repeat the same procedure as you did before. First with the clump of fur on top of the hook shank, then with one underneath. Remember to pull the front portion of the lower clump back on the far side of the hook before it gets anchored down. Sometimes you can get away with only two clumps on the top and bottom of the fly, but other times you need just a little bit more material to fill in the space behind the hook eye. Tie in the material with the same method as you've been doing. With everything tied in and well secured, use multiple wraps of tying thread to build up a nice looking head on the fly. Try to keep the head fairly short in length. Pick up your whip finish tool and use it to do a back to front five or six turn whip finish, then seat the knot well and snip your tying thread free. Eyes are all but essential on this pattern. A drop of gel super glue will really help to keep them permanently affixed to the fly. Apply a small amount just rearward of the thread wraps, then retrieve one of the eyes from the sheet. Make sure to use a good bit of pressure when pressing the eye onto the adhesive. After a few seconds, the adhesive will set and hold the eye in place. Flip the fly over and repeat the procedure on the other side, doing your best to align the second eye with the first. Although you can do it later, applying an ample drop of head cement to the thread wraps now and allowing it time to dry will ensure the wraps won't come unraveled during the final step, which is trimming the fly. Once the head cement is completely dry, remove the fly from your vise so you can begin trimming it to shape. Start off with an angled cut down to the tail on both the top and the bottom of the fly. To make the edges look more natural, snip with your scissors roughly parallel to the fibers, once again giving them kind of an uneven, naturally tapered look. In its final form, the TNT baitfish should look something about like this.